built this team, and she loves the chemistry of this team and the way the team has been practicing. Right, and I think that's going to bode well for the, as they continue to gel in non-con and as they tip off today. One thing that TCU did practice earlier this morning was the tip-off because South Florida has some plays they run off the tip, but obviously TCU did a good job on that. They go inside. Easy two. They're going to have their hands full tonight with Dulce Bankham and Giondu. She is a very talented post player, scoring at a 72% clip. So they've got to really do their work early and often in the post. When you talk about her, you talk about efficiency. And here is TCU on the offense. They want to make South Florida work on defense. With eight on the shot clock. Here's Wilson. Goes baseline. Cut off. Good job defensively. DCU spent a lot of time working on defensive strategy early this morning. From the outside, it's going to be Sweezer's missing her third shot. Pulling down the rebound is Kanisha Godfrey. We like to call her KG. Pull up jumper. Ty will know off the front of the iron. Panko Mangiato with the rebound. She comes in averaging almost 10 boards a game. You see early, though, both teams taking quick shots. Transition defense was big keys for both coaches tonight. Getting back and defending early in transition. Well, the foul is going to be called on Puisis. That'll be her first personal foul. And it'll be the first team foul. TCU, new additions to this squad from last year. They can score. They bring different aspects to the floor. One thing they had a problem with last year, they got congested on offense. Shouldn't be a problem this year. No, they have multiple people that can spread the floor. You saw a little dribble drive action there, so they want to stay four out, one in, spread the floor, really attack you off the bounce, kick the shooters. Now the last two games, the Bulls have not shot the ball all that well, although both of them have been wins. They've been a combined 39%. Big key for them is their opponents during that span shot only 33%. Wilson, a pass first guard. That's going to be a travel call. That'll be another turnover. And I like the way they're challenging Tancom Mangiato and making her put the ball on the floor. Absolutely. They pushed her off the block. They congested her. You know, made her fill bodies around her. And they're going to have to do that all night with her efficiency. They've got to make her be low efficiency because she's going to get shot. Yeah, I was talking to Coach Peebley at the start of the year. She said we have good offensive energy coming into the season. They spent a lot of time with each other this summer. And the team seems to have bonded. And that's such a big key. I don't care how talented you are. If your team doesn't have good chemistry and play for each other, then you're going to struggle. Good defense by the Bulls. The Ravens had no place to go. And here is Carla Brito, the freshman out of Las Palmas, Spain. Nice rebound pulled away by Emily Fisher. They call her Fish. Had a great visit with her before the game. She got surprised on Tuesday. Her parents... Flew over here from Melbourne, Australia. She had no idea they were coming. Pull up jumper, buried by KG. Kanisha Godfrey. Good start for TCU. And how special is that for Emily Fisher to be surprised by her family from across the world to see her finally play in person? I just love that for her. Well, that's big because Godfrey, the last two games, only six points, one of 16 shooting. Basketball, though. Emily Fisher had her eyes up the whole way down the floor, inside to the post, outside. Good and great pass for a wide open three. Those people have got to be happy with that offense. Absolutely. Maria, Marina Asensio, the freshman out of Spain, is now running the show offensively and buried again. Seven and two bowls on top. Toby, great drive, awesome move, quick move. And here's your first look. TCU drop back now into a two-three zone, changing up their defense a little bit. They worked on this a lot this morning in their two rounds. Gonzalez, they gave her a lot of so players that really know how to win games and compete at a high level. Well, Patricia Morris will check into the lineup. That was way too easy for Carla Brito. 25 points in the first two games of the year, but only 11 points in the two games six. But TCU banging on the end. What a spark she's been coming into this game early for them. USF playing a brutal non-conference schedule, and Coach Fernandez telling us again... Oklahoma and UTA, UT Arlington coming up 
30 minutes following the conclusion of this game from the outside. Buried! She's getting some playing time. Has a lot of potential. Waiting for her to get going offensively. You watch her in practice, and she does a great job. Doesn't miss a whole lot. On the dribble penetration. That was a really nice drive by the AAC preseason player of the year. You've seen glimpses of why she's so well respected within the AAC. And she's also an Ann Myers Drysdale candidate, which is a pretty high award. Absolutely. Cut her up 22 points versus Alabama in their last game. Big win for USF versus Alabama. Bradley gets it away. Somebody's going to have to shoot it with four to two. Nice little step through. That looks easy. Great finish by McCauley there, especially as the clock was winding down. South Florida wasn't giving them anything easy, that possession. You know, she started at the beginning of the year. Reagan and the coaching staff took a look at it and said, let's let Evie get start because if we put in Roxanne, gives us a little touch offense off the bench. For sure, and some players just come that play better off the bench. They're able to watch the game. And Chineca comes out of the pack with it. Lost the handle into the hands of TCU. McCall has done a nice job off the bench. Has to put up the stop sign. Long three. Toby buries the three. Team turnovers the ball game. Now TCU with a chance to tie it up or even take the lead, which would be their first of the game. Oh, on the drive. Out and in one. TCU holding on to a one-point lead. Trying to make it an 8-0 run off the mark. Three bull rebound pulled down by Asensio out of Spain. Part of the Sp Spanish under-18 national team. Coaches spent a lot of time in the defense, and they're still coaching up defense in front oh, of yeah. us. Well, South Florida has such good movement. They set good screens. Please just bury the three. Roxanne McCullough speaks three languages. After the miss, the put. Colorado with a chance in regulation, point blank range to win it, and they missed two or three shots. Yeah, that's tough. Ooh. Tough to go out like that. That's a two, Barry. And they're going to replay it. To I think Coach Beaver and her coaching staff are real smart right now, bringing her off the bench. I, I say so. <laughs> she's been fantastic today. And considering she's had season injury, injuries the last couple of years, good to see her healthy. 65 seconds left to play in the half. Dribble penetration ends up in two for the Horn Frogs. Little step back pull up. Godfrey can't get it. USF, two second difference, shot of the game clock, chance to take the lead. They are 3 0 with a lead at halftime, 1 0 when they trail. Ooh, a little floppy action there, got Chineca wide open. Final nine seconds. She's really stepped it up the last couple of minutes, knowing her team needs her to score. McCullough's got to move, and she does. Goes inside, off the clock. Puisis loves to run, especially baseline, all of a sudden pop out. There right. she goes. A little elevator screen there for her. Again, they're going to go inside early to fan cam Mangiadu. You called it. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't translate to the games. It doesn't. Us coaches would like it to every time. Yeah. But. Offensive rebound and the put back by Brito. Defensively. How about Ariel Wilson? She came right over to get that. Puisis left open. No. Offensive rebound and the put back by Pat Coleman. And USF, no stranger to the Dallas Fort Worth area. They played UT Arlington last year. They were a top 15 team, and Lady Mavs beat them 61 56. <laughs> Paige Bradley had to give it up quickly. Here's Craven. With eight to shoot, turn around, tough shot, got it. On, on the offensive end of the floor. Elena Chineca gets the second free throw. Her sister was playing in North Carolina, now she's playing in Montana. Must be some fun <laughs> afternoon games in the backyard between those two. Ty will get his half the basket. Take it. Ariel Wilson running the show. She is a pass first point guard. Really doesn't look for her shot. Member of the Canadian national team. 
run the drive we've a seen of times tonight. Just thought a bad, attacked a bad closeout and was able to get to the rim. Rico shooting 52 percent, and then the three on the way off the back of the air. Rebound controlled by Williams. Williams quickly up ahead to Brito. Brito, nice pass inside. Oh, aren't you glad the rim is round? Mm -hmm. Kids, make your free throws. <laughs> and, and, and you know, you see teams practice free throws constantly with right. noise after running. And if for some reason it just doesn't settle in, Williams from outside nails the three. And the lead goes to six. Just a too easy breaking the press there, hitting it down the floor to a wide open three point shooter. And the reason she's a McDonald's All American, but then TCU comes right. And the lead is cut down to three. They need a big defensive stop here. About two and a half here in the third. TCU showed that they backed up a little bit defensively. TCU switching defenses a lot today. Shot clock inside of 10. Nothing at the arc for Sammy Police is there. You saw a high hand on the collar the whole time. The dribble penetration. <laughs> you even have a jacket when you live in Hawaii? Probably not. Probably not. No. <laughs> How special for these players, though, especially these international players that have their families here in the States, being able to watch them do what they love. And the three is a dangerous shooter. Over a thousand career points for Elena Cheneca. She's a special player for them, runs their offense, can knock down shots. Academic player of the year as well, so she's, yeah. she's bright on top of being a good basketball player. eBay was trying to post on the left block. Go inside, Craven off the glass of Johansson. That his team has been doing, but credit TCU again for just being aggressive and putting their heads down and getting to the rim and drawing those fouls. Well, they've done a nice job on Puisis. Now they switch. And Paige Bradley picks her up. They're running right-hander by Gonzalez. Special player. Well, last year she averaged about 14.3 points a game, which was third best in the AAC. Consistent because it's about the same this year. She impressed a lot of us during the UTA game last year. She was. So much more savvy than a lot of the players. International experience helps. It Queen sure does. Left open, lets it fly the three. Four straight misses from the line for the Horn Frogs. Yeah, when you could cut into this lead and get it down to five, that, that hurts right there. That's three points they're just leaving out there. They see only 63% from the strike tonight. Weesus out front, Fisher out her. Dump it down inside. Nice little left. Another move. Out the basket and a foul. Oh, way too easy. Blown layup with a rebound in the putback. I mean, you think about all the different. You have Greece. You have Canada. You need Spain. You have Finland. You have Sweden. You got Colombia. And you got a basket. They really do. They need a good possession here. As you coaches say, value possession. Yes. Nice. Beautiful catch. I won't know. Got it back. Let's try it again. Press 20 on the shot clock. Bradley left open. They cover her up quickly. Tries to create a little bit of space and they cut her off. Bradley, Craven's inside. Nice move. Out They've learned the system. So, and that's what these non conference games are for. Now you don't need a three here. You just need a good look. Am I correct right. in that? Yes. They need good execution here. A little Iverson action over the top for Tommy. Tommy inside. Lori. And they force her catches out off the block a little bit. Well, Penko Mangiato has played with four personal fouls since the 4.37 mark of the third. Seneca inside, big time basket by the senior. The ball in her hands a lot. She's capable of running the point. She's just an incredibly smart player. Can get the ball to the good players, can get it inside. Penko Mangiato, I'm sure that's where a lot of her assists come from, for her and Fusis. But man, she's just an all-around impactful player for South Florida. Bradley will trigger it in. Craven sets the pick. McCullough 
Spin move. Tough shot. Up and under. No. Plus she had one more dribble on the spin. Ah. Boy, Puis is just sprinting down the court. They probably right. could have got him. They're going to have to hurry. Get it over with about one second to spare. Good pressure there on Cheneca. And at the line, it will be Cheneca. Perfect 4 of 4 from the strike tonight. Yep, 7 for 10 coming into this game. So good percentage shooter from the foul line. TCU's got to rebound this and get it up the floor quickly. But we have only one timeout left. Right. Down by five. <laughs> Trailed by as many as 13. Coach Peebley saying you got to hurry it up. McCullough on the drive inside. No whistle. That'll be the fifth personal foul on Phantom Mengiadu. She is a super talented player. I look forward to watching her throughout the rest of the season. She's going to be super impactful. Started her college career at Memphis from the stripe. Five straight misses now here. And when you look at it, it's a five-point game. Exactly. That, oh, that's crushing for coaches. And a timeout's going to be called by Coach Fernandez with 19.3. Well run play, Chineka. TCU trying to play defense, pounded by Brito. That'll put her in double figures and give her a double double today. Just a tough physical finish there to finish this game, and again, that's that's the word to use to describe to her is just tough. Well, she's got great international experience. Played for the Spain under-18 team that lost to Lithuania in the FIBA Euro Championships. But she's got the double-double tonight. 11 points, 10 rebounds, and a block. And TCU now has to prepare for Sam Houston. Back shot open for And the foul is going to be called. Hey, it's still three points. I'll take it. Exactly. Maybe a little too late right now, but. As I tell players, no style points in basketball. That's only diving. <laughs> exactly. You know, Shakespeare had ugly handwriting, but he <laughs> wrote some pretty good stuff. I didn't read it, but I heard it was good stuff. <laughs> and Chineka adds to her total. Different games. And that's the tough non-conference games for South Florida. You look what they've got coming up. They play New Hampshire. Then they've got to play Georgia Tech, either Michigan or Air Force. Then they got to play Texas on December 2nd. North Carolina State on the 11th. Arkansas or Oregon on the 21st. Coach Fernandez, really. <laughs> <laughs> really challenging his team yeah, in the non-con. But again, it's going to prepare them for their conference. But more importantly, it's going to prepare them for postseason play. Absolutely. So Chaneka checks in with 22.